Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to take you through a little bit of an unknown feature, not many people know about it, in Warehouse Insight called our uh, Application Wizard, or Crate Base Application Wizard is, is sort of the full name. And what you can use that for is creating new applications or even extending existing applications uh, by adding uh, pages and things like that to it. So the way we're going to illustrate that today is by creating uh, or extending an application on this handheld device. So this is the handheld device I have in my hand and just to show you what that looks like there it is that's the device and I'll be using this to to deploy and test our application that we're about to build. <clears throat> and what that application is is um, on the output uh, screen here. So within the output uh, application within the system you know I'm just going to grab a production order here and open it up on output, it gives us you know, all the remaining quantities for output, because that's what it's for. But we can also use this output application to record runtime and setup time. Uh, you can contact us, we can tell you what you need to do. But there are some fields you can add. If you add the runtime and setup time fields on here, we'll also capture this runtime and setup time and put that um, <clears throat> you know, in the capacity ledger entries when we post the output. So this is just configuration. You can add those uh, those fields in there and we'll capture the runtime and setup time. Now, what you might want to do though, is if you're capturing runtime and setup time, you might want to see the total runtime and setup time displayed somewhere. So you could do that. You could go in um, to Business Central and on the production order routing uh, table, add in a flow field or something uh, for the runtime and setup time, or you could add a calculated field in the Warehouse Insight device columns to do something similar. And then we can just show the total runtime and setup time right in this grid. But, you know, you might want to see the detail on that. You might want to be able to go in here, tap this, or hit a menu item on here to actually get the details of what was actually output, both quantity, runtime, setup time, all of those sorts of things. So how do we now extend this screen here to be able to drill down and get us more detail about you know, either this operation or the production order as a whole or whatever we want to do. Well, let me show you how we can do that. So we're not going to write any code whatsoever. We're going to use that, that application wizard I mentioned earlier to build this up. But the first thing we want to do <clears throat> is figure out, okay, if we're going to be drilling down from that, that application, so that was the, uh, let's go back to my guy here. So from this application, we're going to drill down. We need to know you know, what the production order number is and all that if we're going to drill down. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go here into Business Central and I'm going to look at my uh, applications that I have defined. So here's my applications. And this is a little bit technical. This, this current step here is a bit technical. But I'm going to find my production order output application. So this is my production order output. And we're going to hit Design. And that's going to open up my design view and it tells me it's read only because it's a base application we don't want to mess with that and i'm going to use this to figure out what variables this uh, this application uses in order to um, uh, pass in the the production order number the production order line number and things like that so i'm just going to grab one of these i could i could go into variables here and just drop one of these here and if i do a drop down this shows me all the variables that are defined within this application. And one of these variables is going to be our production order number. And it's probably the source number here, but we'll go down and there's doc num. So we got document type and document number. So those are the things that we deal with. And for this example, I'm only gonna use the document number. There'll also be a document line number in here and things like that. that you know, typically you would wanna use the, the document line number as well, uh, because your production order might have more than one line on it. But for my purposes, I'm just going to use the document number and that's what we're going to drill down based on is that document number. Okay, so that's what I'm going to use. That's all I need from this. I now know which variable this application uses to manage the production order number. All right, so I'm just going to exit out of that. It doesn't ask me to save or anything because it's a, a base application here. So now that I have that little bit of information, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to come in here and I'm just going to look for our application wizard. So there's our Warehouse Insight Create Base Application Wizard. Open that sucker up. And we have a few different options here for the type of page that we're creating. So we're, you know, when we talk about an application, 
that's got a lot of business logic in it and everything else, but it's it's really a, a form or a page that we're displaying on the handheld device. And so a lookup list is typically what you see, right? If I go into uh, purchase orders or production orders, we'll get a list of those production orders or purchase orders. This includes, you know, a filter field and all that kind of stuff. A document is going to be like a sales order or a production order and those sorts of things. And a worksheet is typically used for, you know, journals or movement worksheets, things like that. But this allows us to have a bit of a header and then the lines underneath. So I'm going to choose this worksheet uh, um, application type as a starting point. So I choose that, I hit next, and now it asks me for, for what I want to call it. And I'll call it uh, Capacity uh, Ledger, um, yeah, that's good enough. And uh, we'll give it uh, Capacity Ledger Entries. And we're good and we're not going to create a main menu because this is going to be a drill down screen or drill down application from my standard production order output app. So now when I hit next, it'll come in and ask us for a bunch of stuff. So the header table is really what our parent table is going to be. And for our purposes, that's going to be the production order line table. So we'll just search for that production order line because you know this is what we want capacity ledger entries for is that production order line. So we've got that and the header filter, this is where we need that document number thing because when we drill down onto this, we wanna say I'm gonna filter this table based on um, the, uh, the document number, okay? So we come in here and we say, you know what? The production order number is going to be that doc num variable that we looked up in the app. So when this thing runs, it's going to filter the production order number down to this variable here. Okay, so that's it. Now the line table is going to be our, actual, our actual capacity ledger entries, right? So we're going to, you know, this is our header to show the production order uh, line info, and the lines are going to be our, our actual entries. So all we do here is, again, it's table 5832, but we're going to uh, search, oops, Capacity ledger entries, there we go. So 5832, I was right. And now the line filter, we could filter up to the production order line, but in our case, it's pretty simple. We don't need to do that. We're just gonna filter on, you know, order number. And there's, by the way, if we wanted to use a line number as well, we'd filter up to, to the parent or to the line number um, on, the, uh, on the application. And I'm just gonna say order number has to also be doc num here. And away we go. Now, I, I mean, ideally you'd also do order type as production, but you know, chances are your your assembly orders, if you're using them, aren't going to have the same numbers as your production orders. So I think this is perfectly safe, and we'll leave it as up. Now here it's asking us for a column event ID, and what this is is this is just an identifier that tells us, you know, what the ID is for the list of all the columns that we're going to be using in this application, and if you want to find out what, what numbers are available, you can go into the uh, Warehouse Insight device columns and it'll have a list of all the events. You can create your own name for it and everything else. But I'm going to do, you know, 3,100,000, uh, uh, whatever I did there, whatever. It doesn't really matter. You know, these numbers are arbitrary as long as you're not using uh, a number you've already used. Uh, this, is, this is fine. Okay, so I'm just going to use that number. Now, when I hit next, it's saying, okay, well, what fields for this particular event, like this, this identifier, do you want to show up? So for the header on the production order line here, right, what I want to show up is I'm, I want just the uh, production order number to show up. I could show the item number. Actually, you know what? Let's, now I'll just use the production order number. But in here, you can have a list of all the fields you want to show up in the header. And I'm just going to have the production order number. So then we hit next. And now it's asking us for the lines. What do we want to show up in that line list? Well, here I want to show, and we can maybe expand this just to make it a little easier. I'm going to come in and I'm going to show, um, you know, the posting date is going to be one of them. And I'm also going to show um, the operation number, maybe. That would be a good one. And then, of course, I'm going to show my setup time. Well, actually, you know what? I'll show quantity too just to see if, you know, what output quantity we've had. And then I'll also show setup time and I'll show uh, run time. So this is the, the list of fields we're gonna show on that list. Pretty simple. Hit next and we're done.
that application is done. That's all there was to it. Well, I lie, that's not all there is to it. So now that we've got that application in this list, this capacity ledger application, I guess I can go and put a description there and everything else. Now we need to link that up to our production order uh, output application. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go in and I'm going to look at uh, the Warehouse Insight menus. So we're going to come in here and grab the menus and I'm going to go for a specific application and I'm going to use my production order um, output application. So there's my production order output application. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to create a new thing called, um, we'll call it history for fun. Oops, history. And by the way, this caption here, if you're using one of these codes, that's if you want to use uh, translations. If I use one of these standard codes, I could have this in, in different languages. But for me, I'm just going to come in here, do history, and we're good. Now, what over here, what we want to do is set a few of these options. Like for one thing, I might have, want to have a nice icon to show history. You can upload your own, own icons and things like that. Um, I don't know. It doesn't really matter which one I use. Let me, um, oh, this one kind of looks like history. I'll just choose that. It's fine. And then on the standard action, what we want to do is we want to come in here and we actually want to use this to start an application, right? Because that's what we're going to do. We're going to hit this and we're going to start a new application. And that application is going to be, guess what? It's going to be the application we just created, this capacity ledger entry application. Okay, so we're done. That's all there is to it. So now what happens is I'm going to come back and bring up my scanner here. All right, so now we're here on the handheld device and, you know, we added that menu item. So I tap here, hey, no menu item. Why is there not a menu item there? Well, we first, when, whenever we make changes in uh, Business Central, we need to come in here and reload the configuration. So quite often doing this uh, type of development using an emulator on uh, your PC is going to be faster because the emulator reloads pretty much instantly, things like that. But of course, I'm doing this on my handheld device, real physical device connected up to my Business Central Cloud instance, and it works just fine. At any rate, now I go into my output and uh, we open it up, and every, all this is the same. I'm going to open up that production order, and um, here are all the operations. And by the way, the first time you reload it, it takes an extra second or so because it is reloading all the application changes we've made. Right, so the first time you start it up, it reloads the application changes. Now, if I come in here, you can see there's my history menu item. And if I tap that, guess what happens? There is the list of my capacity ledger entries and all the detail, production order number at the top and everything else. Okay, and it's as simple as that. And there's all the fields that I defined and we can see all of that history uh, for that specific entry. Now, this isn't exactly, um, uh, you know, all that exciting, the data that I have in here, but uh, it's there. And by the way, I didn't really show you, but when I defined these columns, you can set the width and everything you want as the default. The users can come in here and change it if they like, or I can go back into Business Central, change the widths and all those sorts of things, and, and decide which is visible by default and not if I want to make those changes. Now, one other little quick thing here, because I chose that worksheet base application. It's got some built-in logic that wants you to scan bin, scan item, all that kind of stuff. I mean, you can leave that if you don't care about that, that text there. But if I do want to change that, right, I don't want them to be able to, you know, scan a bin and scan an item. It's not going to do anything if, if they do that, right? It's because there is no bin or item. Uh, it's not going to add anything to the capacity ledger entries. But if I want to make changes to that capacity ledger application that I wrote, I can come into design here, open that up, and all of this stuff was done automatically from um, the, uh, the wizard, right? So we didn't have to do any of this stuff. But here we are, you know, here it says on update status bar. Well, I could go to the, the on update status bar, which is right below it, and it says, hey, scan bin, blah, blah, blah. Or I can just say, you know what, I'm going to delete that block, and now my status bar doesn't get updated. I can also come in here and... Um, you know, delete that block because it's not being used anywhere. Well, that might have been used somewhere else and we'll get a little error message, but we'll find out. And then other things, right? Like we don't have modify line and new line and all that kind of stuff. We're not going to change quantity. So if you really wanted, you could delete all this stuff. It's not going to hurt anything because nothing is going to, you know, happen um, 
when, when they scan any of that. Like we're not going to add anything to uh, the capacity ledger entries or anything like that. But if you wanted to clean it up, you could come in here, you know, there's show picture. I don't know. You probably don't care about that either. We could come in here delete all the stuff we don't care about. And we're left with this very simple little application, which, you know, if you didn't want to use a wizard, you could have come in here, drop this stuff on yourself and, and created this, this exact same application just like this. That's all there is to it. But with the wizard, it makes it a little easier to walk through, create that application, and um, and we're done. So yeah, now if I go back onto the handheld device, you know, there where it had the, the scan bin and all that stuff, we've disabled that, and I'll just make sure I didn't, you know, delete too much stuff and wreck it. And we'll go back in and quickly uh, test it again. So we're going to the output uh, application. Again, it's reloading all the information from Business Central. Open up that particular uh, production order. Go in, hit history, and there are our uh, amazing list of capacity ledger entries. And that's all there is to it. And you can use that anywhere, right? If you're an item inquirer and you want to drill down to prices or availability or whatever the heck you want to do, you could do that. So that's a very quick and easy way, zero code required, and I can extend the application to do you know, almost anything I like. Simple as that. There is my production order history with no status bar, blah, 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 and we're set. All right, there you go. That is as simple as it gets to use the application wizard to build additional applications that you can load into your warehouse insight. This simple example was a drill down page that we could launch from a, an existing application, but the application wizard can also be used to build full-fledged applications just like the ones that run natively in Warehouse Insight. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content.